Is learning WPF even worth it anymore? We've heard this question time and time again. So let's dive into it and find out if WPF is still worth it in 2023. Let's get started. Part one, WTF is WPF. First off, let's see what WPF is even about. Standing for Windows Presentation Foundation, WPF is a graphical subsystem by Microsoft designed for creating rich desktop applications with intricate user interfaces. Pretty simple, really. If you want to build a desktop application, WPF is pretty much your best option out there. Or is it? Why should you care about WPF anymore in 2023? Well, you just have to take a look at where it's at. With a strong community and ongoing updates, it seems to at least not be slowing down. However, no matter what your goal as software engineer is, WPF is for sure not your only option out there. This framework has a lot of competition to deal with. You might be thinking of a few of them right now. Let's look at some that we thought to be interesting and see how WPF compares to them. Part two, why choose WPF? So you're wondering why WPF when there are other frameworks? Why WPF when there is WinForms, MAUI, Blazor, and even Reactive UI? Great question. Let's do a quick round of comparison between them. Let's go. So starting with WinForms, we can see this as the grandparent of WPF, older but still functional. WinForms is easier to learn and great for simple, quick applications. However, it lacks the modern UI features and extensive customization capabilities that WPF offers. If you're looking to create a more dynamic and visually appealing application, WPF is the way to go. What about MAUI? MAUI is basically the new guy, surely has potential, but still needs time to get to its full strength. Designed for creating cross-platform applications, MAUI is excellent for building apps that run on almost any platform, but it's not as mature as WPF in terms of features and community support. If you're focusing solely on Windows desktop application, WPF still has the edge. I've also heard about Blazor, so what about that? Well, Blazor is primarily used for web development. However, it is also capable of building desktop apps. In essence, Blazor allows you to build interactive web UIs using C Sharp easily. It's an amazing technology for sure, but it is mainly focused on a different goal than WPF. This means that if your focus is on desktop applications, WPF is again going to be more suitable for your needs. But then there is also Reactive UI. Reactive UI is a functional reactive framework for .NET, meaning that if functional programming is a need, there is no using WPF for me. But there is one thing. This one doesn't have to be seen as a competitor, as it can be used with WPF, serving as a good complement to WPF rather than a competitor. Reactive UI allows for a more functional approach to UI while making use of all the robust tech that WPF brings to the table. So if you are already comfortable with WPF and are interested in functional programming, incorporating Reactive UI can be a great solution for you. As you can see here, sure, there can be other frameworks that can and will do a better job than WPF in some aspects. But that does not mean that they completely turn WPF obsolete. Not only does WPF still have its place in there as one of the most robust and sophisticated frameworks, it even offers the possibility to be used alongside other frameworks, as is the case with Reactive UI. Uh, by the way, if there are more WPF competitors out there that you feel we should have mentioned, let us know in the comments below. All right. Now that we know its place in the world of c -sharp frameworks, we need to think of a few other questions that come to mind like, you know, I want a job, can WPF help me with that? Part 3. Enterprise level applications. Oh, completely valid question. Let me tell you something. WPF isn't just a playground for hobbyists, it's a serious contender in the enterprise world. Companies like Autodesk and Telerik use WPF for their complex, feature-rich software solutions. So yes, by mastering WPF, 
you're not just learning a framework, you're acquiring a skill that has real world applications and a job market demand. For an interesting example of a proper WPF application you could use on your portfolio, check out this GitHub project about a TCP server client application that allows the user to send a random number to the server that can turn on or off a light in the client side. Really interesting use case. But to be a serious contender as a framework for large companies, it has to be capable of handling data. Part four, data-driven applications. Well, as it turns out, WPF is a powerhouse when it comes to data-driven applications. Its data binding capabilities allow you to create dynamic UIs that can interact seamlessly with various data sources. This is crucial for applications that require real-time updates and user interaction. For an example of how WPF handles data, check out our video on building a WPF journal app with database connectivity. There we made good use of its data handling capabilities. Also, another thing we made good use of is its support for proper MVVM architecture. And with that, a quick shout out to our sponsor, NordVPN. You probably have heard about them before. They are the best when it comes to VPNs out there. I've tried many different VPN services, at least five or six, I believe, and all of them were trash to a degree. Every single one of them was lacking something that NordVPN just has. And it's the overall best VPN tool you can use. I love using it on my phone to watch, for example, my favorite anime in my favorite language, Japanese, with Japanese subtitles, which for some reason you can't have when you are using uh, the German version. I don't know why, it's, a, it's such a big uh, struggle to just add the subtitles to it. You can even use it on your TV if your TV supports smart features like applications, like installing apps. And obviously also on your PC, even the browser plugin allows you to do it directly inside of the browser, not touching any other parts of your computer's internet. But obviously the best part is if you use it for your PC in general to stay safe, but obviously also to enjoy content you couldn't otherwise enjoy in your country. So let's get back to the content. Part five, MVVM architecture. Well, one of WPF's strongest features is its complete support for the MVVM, so the model view, view model architecture. MVVM as a short brief is a software design pattern that promotes separation of concerns, or in other words, separating each part of your application into what they need to be. So whatever handles the view only handles the view and whatever handles the view model is only handling that. MVVM might be quite a complex topic. So if you need a bit of an explanation, you can check out our video on full stack web development with ASP and Angular. There we made extensive use of MVVM. So you should get a good understanding of this topic with that. But in short, MVVM essentially serves to make your applications easier to test, maintain and extend. Also facilitating data binding and decoupling your business logic from the UI, which is crucial for a long-term project. You can also check out this project on GitHub for a quick little example of a good MVVM implementation for WPF. They should help you to get to know this tech a bit better. When we talk about modern design, we have to think about multimedia support, not only things like audio and video, but also vector graphics, for example. Part six, multimedia applications. Well, luckily WPF excels in multimedia applications. You can integrate audio, video and animated content easily, making that a no brainer. But additionally, WPF also supports vector graphics, allowing you to create scalable UIs that look great on any screen. In any way, we still are missing one last question. How far can we take WPF? Is what I intended to build even possible with this framework? For that, let's look at the extensibility of WPF. Part seven, extensibility. One of the most compelling aspects of WPF is its extensibility. This framework allows you to extend its capabilities far beyond what comes out of the box. Whether you're looking to integrate third-party libraries, custom controls, or even machine learning models, WPF has you covered. Let's talk about third-party libraries for a moment. Well, the .NET ecosystem is rich with libraries and packages that can be easily integrated into your WPF application. Whether you need advanced charting capabilities, PDF generation, or even real-time communication features, there's likely a NuGet package out there that can help you achieve it. 
And let's not forget about machine learning. With ML.NET, Microsoft's machine learning framework for .NET developers, you can easily integrate machine learning models into your WPF applications. This opens up a whole new world of possibilities from predictive text to image recognition and beyond. For a hands-on example of how extensible WPF can be, check out this GitHub project that demonstrates integrating a machine learning model into a WPF application for real-time object detection. So then, back to our initial question. Is learning C Sharp in 2023 still worth it? Well, the answer is a resounding yes. Do you have a good argument against WPF? Well, let us know in the comments down below. Or maybe you have some questions regarding WPF. Feel free to let us know as well. And with that, if you found this video helpful, please hit the like button and subscribe if you are new to the channel. And also, thanks for watching. And as always, happy coding.